you need to be confident to sit at the table. That's why you need to be confident to raise up your hand and put yourself out there. Don't say my work will speak for me. Uh uh, speak for yourself. Many people succeed in different areas of spheres of influence. Um, you get people that succeed in corporate and you get people that succeed as entrepreneurs. Um, it's always in a conflict, right? Um, because right now you actually have an era where a lot of people are getting into entrepreneurship and it becomes somewhat, you, you become somewhat like a, of an outlier, I guess, when you decide that you don't want to get into entrepreneurship. However, um, we are just, all of us are just really called and purposed for different things. And there's been people that have made it, have gotten the life that they wanted in corporate. And then there are people that have gotten the life that they wanted in entrepreneurship. Whether that is a decision for you to pick right now or to make right now, or you're still trying to figure it out, regardless of the age that you're at, you will succeed in the sphere of influence that God has placed you in, right? And I believe that fully, but also don't rush yourself. Just give yourself enough grace and maybe sometimes get into the group of experiencing those two spheres and then deciding which one works for you. Today we're going to be reading a book by Sheryl Sandberg. Now, I saw a TED talk that she did and I decided I'm going to buy her book. And the book that we're gonna be reading today or reviewing is Lean In. Sheryl Sandberg was the former CEO of Facebook uh, or Meta but now um, she did leave it. So yeah, the book is actually about women, as it says, women work in the world to lead. So she, ex she talks about the challenges that she's seen as to why women are not particularly in high positions um, or why that has stalled or why that's delayed and what causes it, but also how to maneuver around those situations, right? And, <laughs> I'm not much of a feminist. <laughs> I'm not much of a feminist. But however, I do believe that there's some nuggets in this book that I feel are very helpful. And are things to always think about, right? I may not have agree with her 100% with some of the things. I'm one who, when I feel like a chapter does not resonate with me, I don't continue reading it. So I have read the whole book, but I think there's two, there's one or two chapters that I just felt like, mm -hmm. For me it just doesn't make sense um, but yeah more than anything it's just about increasing your self-confidence in corporate spaces right and also sort of debunking the myth of doing it all because i mean also she says in the book i think the question should not necessarily be can you have it all but but it should be can you do it all right because you can have everything that you want to but are you going to be able to manage it like any other blessing comes with a responsibility if you want that work that position and at, at that corporate girl you need to be able to manage it correctly or manage it well right in order to still maintain it and i guess it is responsibility that then qualifies whether you are able to have that thing in your life in the long run or not so yeah the book is about just increasing your self-confidence um, like sitting at the table um, getting your partners at home to be uh, to do more and not holding yourself to unattainable standards by debanking the middle of doing it all and guys I think for me that resonated a lot in terms of the whole doing it all because or well, maybe because we grew up with our mothers going to work, coming back home, and they would come back home, and then they would they would cook, and we would expect supper. Like I was even one who just yeah went to the over the limit with it. At five o'clock, I would be so mad at my mother if she didn't cook supper for us because I'd be like, What's going on? You know, but I never understood that actually this woman was also, my mother was a teacher. I mean, this woman was also hard at work, you know, from eight till four. And then now she has to come back and to cook for us and we must eat and we go to sleep and we don't even appreciate that, you know, or 
she she's just tired you know and i guess <laughs> so it sort of kind of explains why they then taught us how to cook at very young ages so that at least it alleviates some weight because guys it's a lot but then again back to the book this is about women um work and the world to eat if you want to read it read it if you don't want to read it read, uh, don't read it but the thing about a book and this is what one of my mentors always says to me if at any point in time whether you are halfway through the book or you're a chapter in and you feel like it doesn't resonate with you skip to the next chapter if the whole book doesn't resonate with you don't read it i have books that i haven't read before because i would read one book and i'll feel like mm -mm. and those are books that i've given away um i have books that i've read the whole book but one chapter was just like no whether it's morals whether it's beliefs whether it's opinions that just are just not strong to you don't i've read the whole book no i'm lying i've read the book but i think there is one chapter that i just did not like <laughs> or not really didn't like but it didn't resonate with me so i didn't i didn't continue reading it but i'm going to just give you some of the nuggets that i felt were really worth it for me and sort of justify <laughs> me buying the book so there's about like 11 chapters as i said how to keep your like how to sit at the table confidently so especially for women right how to sit at the table how to raise your hand when opportunities come because i've also realized some women actually don't raise up their hands when opportunities come and she also speaks about it as well especially in a male dominated industry uh, a lot of women and i probably was or am maybe i'm working on it i don't know i probably was one of those people who would not necessarily raise my hand but i'll just be like oh, but my work does my work should speak for itself and i think that's the myth like why should your work speak for itself why can't you speak for yours for yourself why can't you speak and then let your work Lot sort of substantiate your reasoning why can't you just say i can do that or if i can't do that i'll learn how to do that and my work will prove that i'm able to do that right this book i think it would be a good idea for you to read this book and also intelligence isn't enough um i'll just put the book and the author in between this book intelligence isn't enough and nice girls don't get the corner office if you were really about women empowerment and and want to sort of see where your flaws are um, i think intelligence isn't enough together with this one and nice girls won't get the corner office that will sort of kind of help you but first they will break you down first because it's things that we do subconsciously right and um having to see that just yeah yeah i saw a lot of my mistakes when i was reading these books guys <laughs> i really did but anyway i'm gonna read you some quotes that i liked and then you can talk about them and then you can let me know if this is a book that you can read if so do you boo if not that's fine one of the first quotes that i liked from her book is her saying and while i believe that increasing the number of women in positions of power is a necessary element of true equality i do not believe that there is one definition of success or happiness this is so powerful for me this is it not all women want careers not all women want children and not all women want both i would never advocate that we should have we should all have the same objectives okay i'm gonna read that book i'm gonna read this one again it says while I believe that increasing the number of women while I believe that increasing the number of women in positions of power is a necessary element of true equality I do not believe that there is one definition of success or happiness not all women want careers not all women want children and not all women want both <laughs> not all women want careers not all women want children and not all women want both I do not believe that there is one definition of success or happiness. Guys, I can't elaborate on this further. Some of us, it's not even about careers and children. That's not even the choice. But the other thing is, um, in the sphere of influence, 
that you have called me for, that God has called me for, or that I'm able to, to succeed in. Where, where's my gifting? Is it in corporate or is it in entrepreneurship? That's the first question. Even before we discuss what success looks like. I actually like the quote that um, um, I, was re I was listening to Amanda Gambuza and she was saying, you need to decide what success looks like to you, to yourself. You need to write it down and that should be an unnegotiable for you. But your success and my success are not going to look the same. Now I'm paraphrasing. But she's like, if, if success to you is, is, is having a house, having a car, and you can pay your bills, that's your success. And at the end of the day, because you've decided that that is your success, it will make you happy. But your success and my success are not the same. And so if you are able to jot down what success looks like to you, that's the first step. And then working towards that, nothing else would matter. If success to you is not having a car, why would not having a car bother you? Because it's not within your success, like, spectrum, radius, whatever, right? And, and I think for me, it was just one of the things where it's like, you have somebody who's like a former CEO of Facebook saying to you, Successes are not the same, and I'm not pushing careers onto women. I'm not pushing motherhood onto women. I'm saying decide which one is success to you, and go about that. If for you, um, going up a corporate ladder is not important, then baby go. Whether you are admin, or reception, or a manager, or a COO, it won't make you happy, because that's not what success looks like to you. If success for you, is having a husband, raising the kids, and being at home executive and just making sure. Okay, not, let me not use just because it kind of seems like I'm belittling it. But making sure that your family is set and they're ready and they're ready to hit their goals out there in the world. Then that is your success. But do determine what your success looks like. And then your path will be a little bit brighter or clearer, right? But start off from a whole... God, where have you placed me? And you might have not placed me where I am in the particular moment that I am. I might be in corporate, but I need to be in entrepreneurship. Or I might be in entrepreneurship, but I need to be in corporate. Where am I succeeding? Sometimes it takes you experiencing these two different um, uh, journeys for you to say, mm, no. You know, I have a friend and we sat down with her sister and she was like, I tried corporate and I tried entrepreneurship and I, when I was in corporate, I thought inter entrepreneurship would be my thing. But when I started entrepreneurship, I realized, mm -mm, actually, I like corporate bit. And for her, it, it was like, it freed her from the whole, yeah, but everything, everybody must hustle, everybody must grind. What if you're grinding in corporate? They, they have been millionaires, there are millionaires even till today from corporate so you need to decide what success looks like to you which is what she's saying you need to decide what your path is and go about it you know and you will be at peace with it she was just saying you know what go about it your way and decide what you want then she says that this is another thing that i like she then says while compliant raise your hand and speak when called upon behaviors might be rewarded in school they are less valued in the workplace Meaning don't wait for somebody to say, you may now speak. If you have an opinion or you have a solution to a problem, then advocate for that for yourself. Like advocate for that. Go after it and say, listen, I'm willing to do that. Don't wait for somebody to say, okay, take. And I think for me, the reason why I even underlined it was that um, having come from like a, a bigger company to get into work for a startup, I then realized, like guys, startups are different. They don't give you work. <laughs> you need to find work for yourself. At the previous company, they would give you work. You'd have tasks every day, every week, you know, every month. There's certain things that you need to achieve. They give you all those things. At startups, you you navigate. You you. It's like, it's just, it's a startup, it's a small company, find, prop, we have a lot of problems that we're solving, find one and fix it, that will be your job. 
every Monday find things to do that make the money company or that will bring in a revenue or whatever. But they, there's always that mindset of we want you to be able to run on your own. And if, if essentially that skill that you learn is something that's going to help you also when you get out, whenever it is, when you get out and you want to either branch out on your own or you want to grow within the company because the more responsibilities you take and the more you take initiatives, the more people can see that, mm, okay, you know, she runs. She can run by herself. He can run by himself. So completely 100% agree with this. Another thing that I like is she says, I was raised to believe that girls could do anything boys could do and that all career paths were open to me. I actually noted, like I literally just uh, underlined that and I love, I love the sentence, all career paths are open to me. Once you start saying that and believing that all career paths are open to me, all career paths are open to me. And I remember, and I think I said it also in my story about my internship, about how to a certain degree, I wasn't allowed by, by the, um, one of the guys, um, they were teaching the other guys how to drive a tractor. And they were saying, no, girls don't drive tractors. And I forced it. Because in my, in my, in my mind, I was thinking, wh why? why am I not privileged also to do that? Not necessarily that I want to do what all men do. You know, but oh, but just the thing of, I want to learn, right? I want to learn, and if I can't learn, then we can say, you know, we can't drive a tractor. But don't say, I shouldn't because I can't. Be even before you've taught it to me, and we've failed at that. So let me fail at it first, and then I'll say, okay, for me, you know, it doesn't work. But don't say, okay, women can't do this completely. I completely agree with this. All career paths are open to me. And that's, if you believe in affirmation, that's that's something that you need to say as well. All career paths are open to me. All industries are open to me. If I want to leave an agricultural sector and I want to go into tech, if I want to move from tech to banking, if I want to move from banking to law, if I want to move from law to whatever, hospitality, I can do that. All career paths are open to me. And that's something that you need to firmly believe, not only as a woman, but also as men as well. Just believe that. I'm telling you, if you believe that, nothing is going to stop you. And you won't have that self-doubt when you get into an interview room and they say, but you don't have experience. You can say, but I'm willing to learn. I didn't have experience that side when I joined in, but I was willing to learn. I don't have experience now, but I'm willing to learn, right? Now guys, this is just from the first chapter. And then she says in the same chapter, you will lean into your career and you will find something that you love doing and you will do it with all your gusto. Find the right career for you and go all the way, sorry, and go all the way to the top. Start out by aiming high, try and try hard. Like go at it very, very hard. But then she then asks, so please ask yourself, what would I do if I weren't afraid? Then go and do just that. I'm busy doing a channel now. <laughs> well, try not to do a channel, child. <laughs> In chapter two, it's about sitting at the table. And she says, uh, the real issue was not that I felt like a fraud, but I could feel something deeply and profoundly and could be completely wrong. When I don't feel confident, one tactic I've learned is that it sometimes helps to fake it. On other days, I was in a lousy mood and I had to fake it. Yet after an hour of forced smiling, I eventually often felt cheerful. I would never possess my brother's effortless confidence, but I could challenge the notion that I was constantly heading for failure. My brother was more overconfident than I am. And she describes how sometimes men and women just handle things differently. Um, a man will, will probably inherently at first glance, handle it with arrogance, and women will handle it with insecurity. But she's saying, just fake it, fake it till you, you get to that point, you know, especially if it's not something that is in you. Um, but 
she she then speaks about how men are more like prone to like um get for higher positions as compared to women you know she said something so powerful guys she says um opportunities are rarely offered they are seized right and that's why you need to be confident to sit at the table that's why you need to be confident to raise up your hand and put yourself out there and advocate with your speech and with your work don't say my work will speak for me uh -uh, speak for yourself speak for yourself just say listen i'm here i want to do this and then she says men are also more likely to chase a growth opportunity even before a new opening is announced they are impatient about their own development and believe that they were incapable of doing more they were capable of doing more taking initiative pays off it's hard to visualize someone as a leader if she's always waiting to be told about what to what did i say guys don't don't wait don't wait if you need to stretch yourself and get out of that comfort zone just do it but don't wait most of the time give yourself unattainable unattainable goals especially in the workspace just you know sometimes challenge yourself go to your boss and say i'm willing to do this and this and this even though you don't know how you're gonna do it <laughs> you will figure it out that stress that anxiety will push you to say oh okay i promise to do this but it will grow you and that's what is important especially and this is a skill that you can use both in corporate and i presume also in entrepreneurship entrepreneurship also is full of taking risks you are entering into a terrain that you do not know how that is going to turn out i remember um who is it uh jordan peterson and he, he speaks about trying out new things and he's like we don't like trying out new things human beings don't like trying out new things because they don't like feeling stupid but you don't realize it's in feeling stupid that you're actually starting to learn actually love them that you're starting to learn something you know and he, yeah i'm just gonna read these quotes guys in retrospect at a at a certain time it's your ability to learn quickly and contribute quickly that matters so your ability to learn and contribute faster and quicker makes a difference there is no perfect fit when you're looking for the next big thing to do you have to take opportunities and make up an opportunity fit for you the ability to learn is the most important quality that a leader can have when we start looking at your leadership styles we start looking at do you take initiative are you somebody that we can rely on do you get what the bottom line is and are you able to produce results guys we're still in chapter two but i think this review is going to be a little bit longer i think i'm probably going to do part one and part two of this book because there's just things that i yeah there's just things that i that i that are just nuggets that i feel like yeah she says what it taught me was that you have to be very confident even though you're so self-critical inside about what it is you may or may not know and that to me leads to taking risks she then goes back and she says i know that my success comes from hard work from help from others being at the right place and at the right time no one accomplishes anything alone and in order to continue to grow and challenge myself i have to believe in my own abilities so that's the first thing that you need to believe in your abilities you need to believe that you can do it it's like going back to that affirmation of saying all industries all career paths are open for me and i can do this and if i can't do this i can learn and i will learn quickly and i will learn fast and i will deliver results 